I had every intention of doing like an outfit, so the week on holiday, and then I just completely forgot. Every single week we were both, like there was some kind of shop with me, mm -hmm. video, that was like the bread and butter of what we were doing. On a Monday I wear the same dress, they're like, oh it's Monday. <laughs> so my New York outfits will be my favourite things that I've worn this year so far, yeah. rather than new outfits. This is going to be like a, a okay. fun afternoon. Like, let's just clip you in. I'm ready for the ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yes. I'm just tired today. How are you? Oh, well, I was tired. But I've actually managed to get a lot done in a short space of time. What have you got done? So, oh, oh, what haven't I got done? Okay. So, I mean, I got up, I say pretty late. I got up at half nine, which I feel is quite late. But in comparison, I got up at three o'clock this morning and stayed up till about six because I was watching Irish Wish. Have you seen it? Now that makes sense to me if you'd stayed up till three o'clock in the morning watching Irish Wish. Not that you woke up to watch Irish Wish. No, I didn't wake up <laughs> specific. I didn't wake up specifically to watch. I didn't go, oh, it's three in the morning. Oh, I know. Let's watch a Lindsay Lohan movie on Netflix. No. <laughs> I woke up and I couldn't get back to sleep again. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night being really thirsty and really hungry? Not hungry, but definitely thirsty. That's like I haven't like, drunk enough water the day before. But it's just, I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. So I went downstairs, I made a cup of tea and a slice of toast. And I was like, oh, flicking through it. And I thought, oh, let's give this Irish wish a go. It was terrible, but I watched it all. <laughs> I watched it. I watched the first half and then the kids kept coming in and I never watched the end. I don't think I need to watch the end. I know where it was I going. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, I know you, you, get, you get where it's going. I am all for these terrible made for Netflix movies. Oh, but the beginning was so terrible. So <laughs> terrible. Like, I can't I even describe how terrible it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, oh, shall I turn it off? Shall I turn it off? <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Shall I turn it off? <laughs> no, I'll watch this until I, I go watched... to sleep. It did get better. It's very far fetched, but it did get better. But anyway, so I watched that. So yeah, so I got up at half nine. And then, um, well, as you know, because I did text you, I was watching a bit of Jane McDonald this morning. Yeah. Very on <laughs> brand. She's doing this travel programme. Me and Chris really like watching a bit of Jane McDonald because she what would recruit else? people now. What else does Jane McDonald do apart from travel programmes? Well, she is the new Judith Chalmers. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Who knows who Judith Chalmers is? Leave a comment. Who remembers Judith Chalmers? I uh, wish you were here. Um mm. So, yeah, so we were watching um, one of her travel programmes. She was in Florida. Mm -hmm. and there, so I've, then I've done two loads of washing. I've done a, I've put on a chicken casserole. I've baked two cakes. Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> because like, she just felt like baking a cake, and I was like, why not two? <laughs> well, I've, I've done one for work. So I've made, nice. like, school cake. So they're cool in at the moment, and then I just need to ice them and put some sprinkles yeah. on them um so I made two cakes Chris has been in the garden so he's mowed the grass he's currently putting together like bits of the gazebo so if you hear like clanging or, or swearing that's you know him in the garden um and yeah showered and now got ready for the day so yeah and here we are wow just about to film this and it's just like tick 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 tick, tick, tick. and you know what I'm going to do this afternoon I'm going to make some jewellery mm. interesting I bought a um like a little clay making jewelry making kit. The silver clay. No, it's just oh. silver clay. Because I really want to buy some silver clay. You could it like oh. you you've put fire on it, and then all of the clay kind of disappears and it becomes just silver. So you can make silver jewelry, but it's clay. So you like model it, and then under under a flame, the clay all kind of goes away, and it just is a silver ring. Oh, oh, I think I've seen things like that on reels and stuff because I was looking into like the jewelry thing I and that, no I, idea that I always wondered what that was. <gasps> Should we get some for next week? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a good well, idea. Well, let me see how I get on with this. Like, basically, this is like my first jewelry making set. <laughs> <laughs> is it like ages three plus? <laughs> Got it from Hobbycraft. So I thought, right, I'll give it a go and see. Do you know, I used to make jewelry years ago. I think everybody's oh. made jewellery at some point. 
Whoa. So did I. Now I'm thinking I know what you mean with the clay because I used to make like little cupcakes and make them into earrings. Yeah. Like like FIMO clay and then you'll get yes. the, the findings that you put in. Yeah, you just put it in the oven and bake I'm it. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. But like I used to make beaded jewellery years ago. There used to be a, um, a shop. Uh, I don't know if it was a world, like worldwide, nationwide, not worldwide. There was a shop called Bijou Beads. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my God, I was in there every single week. Like, oh, I get some of these leaves and I get some of these flower beads. And I made, like, necklaces. I made my bridesmaids' necklaces for our wedding and earring. Mm. So I used to make jewellery. But I feel like I haven't done it for so long. I feel like I've forgotten everything. And so, and I've not done clay stuff. Like, so this is going to be, like, a a fun okay. afternoon. For sure we're going to get some of that silver clay. I completely forgot about that. Also, remind me of, you know, like the bead shops. Do you remember when you used to wear, um, well, I mean, you know, I'm back to that hairstyle now, but like little grips in your hair. I used to get beads and flowers to put on the grip and put it in your hair. What, to glue on? No, because they were like, you could just thread the bead onto the, the hair grip. You know, like, you know, a hair grip, just like a, you know what a hair uh, grip is. A what, a bobby pin? Yes. Or, or no, this? no, no, a bobby pin, a bobby pin. A bobby pin, yeah. Right, so you just thread the bead onto it, or however many beads you want, and then you put it on, and it's just like a little jewel oh, at the end of that. the bobby pin. So that, and then we used to have little um, embroidery flowers that you could do it with as well. Oh, I never did that in my youth. Oh, talking about my youth, I went to a museum yesterday, and they had, like, toy section, retro toy section. The 80s is a retro toy section. I was looking at it going, oh, I used to play with that. I used to play. Oh, <laughs> like, very nice. Why is rude. this in a museum? <laughs> yes, why are my toys in a museum? Why is my childhood in a museum? <laughs> yeah, I know. Suddenly yeah. we're like my dad with the timber. <laughs> like my dad who never had an outdoor toilet and had a, a, a tin bath in front of the fire. And I'm like, <laughs> how are we now going to museums and seeing smartphones that we had when we were kids? Oh, God. Honestly, they had Cabbage Patch Doll. They had, what else did they have? Like a My Little Pony, which, I mean, they're out now anyway. But all like this, and I was like, oh, trolls. Was like, trolls, that's what it feels like. These museums are trolls. <laughs> yeah, trolls. What else did they have? Cindy. I was always a Cindy girl rather than a Barbie girl. Mm, yeah. I had Cindy. I think Cindy was cheaper. Yeah, I think I think so. that's why I had more Cindy's than Barbie's. Yeah. Because Cindy was cheap. I think Cindy. I think Cindy had a kinder face. Don't know why. Interesting. Yeah, I just felt like she had a kinder face. Was Cindy British? Um, you know, like Barbie. Barbie was clearly American, but I wonder if because no one talks about Cindy. You never hear about it on TV. I wonder if Cindy was the British answer to Virgin. Barbie. Maybe. I don't know. I have to Google this, but I'm on my phone, so I can't Google, <laughs> Google it. So Google it. I'm obviously gonna You're going to Google it right now. I mean, hello, everybody, before we begin. <laughs> and this is part of the podcast, right? <laughs> That's not don't a call it a podcast. Don't call it a podcast. I mean, we haven't even said hello. We've literally just been like... Blah, 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 blah. It is. Cindy's a British fashion doll created by Pedigree Dolls oh. and Toys in 1963. Arrival to Barbie. Wow, there we go. So, yes. Um, oh, they had an unsuccessful attempt to introduce Sydney in the uh, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney in the United States. Just didn't work. So, um, oh, and then they remodeled her to look more American. As a result, as a result, the doll's popularity declined. So it just like ruined everything. And then Mattel filed a lawsuit. Oh, and then they remodeled Sydney's face again in the nineties, which would have been when we would have had it. And that's probably where she looked kinder. Because <laughs> she had a remodeled face. Interesting. Remodeled face. <laughs> interesting well going back to you saying about you coming up um at the weekend um i was literally just talking to milo and he said because we're going to do a um murder mystery mm, i haven't excited. decided which one yet i'm like i've been you know reading the reviews can't decide there's so many that look so cool but they're not really what i want like there's ones where you can get um you get all of the information you try and solve the mystery together which would be our thing you know like only murders the, mm-hmm. with the murder board and stuff but i think we want one where everyone plays a character okay so milo was just saying to me he just came in and he was like you know when we do this game he said you need to give me uh, my character as much time as possible like i need as much time because he said i need to like really think about his, his clothes and stuff and he said and emma and chris he said they won't see me until we play the game because he said and i will be him 
Oh, he's method acting. He's method acting. So much because he was like, and I will be, I will be my character. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's some brilliant. <laughs> I know. So we definitely need one where Milo can play a character, if nothing else. But I mean, are we, yeah. are we dressing up? I mean, how yeah, Chris for sure. Well, I <laughs> Chris doesn't need to know. We'll just spring it on him. <laughs> Here is your outfit. You are wearing yeah. it. <laughs> also, Milo will be addressed um, as Pablo for the duration of the evening. I just Milo. imagine Milo. When I turn up, I, I imagine that Milo is just going to be have this like little suit and a top hat on. For some <laughs> it depends reason. on what the character's going to be. That's the whole but thing. He better have a top hat on. I just um... he would love a top hat. He he said he's going to have a magnifying glass, and I said, "Well, you don't know what the character's going to be yet." And he was like, yeah. oh, "Like I'm going to need as much time with this character as possible." Are we <laughs> actually? Really do we think. actually have to act out the roles as well? So whoever gets killed, are we actually going to have to be like? I don't know. I, th- I I've only done one once, and it was so many years ago. Like. 15, 20 years ago. Um, so I really don't know what it'll be like, but you usually get like something, like a recording that you play in between that like pushes the story along and you might have script that you oh. read. Oh, okay. okay. It's really cool. But oh. What a weekend we're going to have. Murder, jewellery. Jewellery making. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to open all hours. Oh. We're going to art rights. I was driving down somewhere yesterday, um, quite close to us, and I was like, I don't know what made me think of it, and I thought, oh, we've never been down here with Emma and Chris, and they would probably love to see where Open All Hours was filmed. He's literally yeah. around the corner. Madness. Well, yeah, oh. I want to I wanna go. I'm excited. I'm excited. But yeah, anyway, should we say hello to everybody? <laughs> hello. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Don't call it a podcast. Um, You were talking about something a minute ago, and it made me think... What did it, oh, I know what it made me think. First of all, your entire day so far sounds like one of my days. Like, I was doing oh, this, and then I was doing this, and then I decided to do this, and then later I'm going to make some jewellery. And someone would look at me like, she's doing it again. Um, but this week, I have felt so overwhelmed. I feel like I've pushed myself of, to the point of... To the limit. This is too much now. You have to stop. Um, mm. Too many things. I haven't had a day. I've had two nights this week where I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning and then just got up at a normal time. Were you watching Lindsay Lohan's Irish Wish? I wish. <laughs> wish. Which, by the way, is basically, P.S. I love you if Hallmark made it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so terribly bad and good. Mm. Um, But I felt so, like I really often will say like, oh, I'm feeling really burned out. But I kind of got to Friday this week and thought, no, this is it. This is, I really feel like, I just want to be in a room by myself for like three days. Don't even want to talk to people, like so shut down. And then when you were talking about like, oh, I was feeling really tired, but then I got all these things done. One of the topics that I had on the list of, shall we talk about this for the podcast? That's not a podcast. is like the feeling the need to be productive all the time and how hard it is to not do something. So just not do anything. Mm. Do you want to talk about that today? I can't, what were we going to talk about? <laughs> God, while you were talking about that, I was like, oh. we were going to talk, I think we're going to talk about consumerism. No, shopping, mm. shopping. We'll shopping. get into that. I feel like the whole burnout and the, the toxic productivity could be another time. Um, it, it definitely was just, it kind of triggered something when you were talking about it. Because it does feel like that's where your self-worth comes from. Like, if you didn't do anything that day, it makes you feel bad. Rest yeah, is but still you know, valuable. Rest is very valuable. Yes. And you know what? When we said about self-care and all that kind of stuff, and self-care comes in many different forms, mm. like just doing nothing is an act mm. of self-care because your body needs rest. Like you think about when you're so, you go, 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 and then you get ill. Mm. That's your body's way of saying, uh, can we just like slow down a bit? I know. That's definitely the way I feel at the moment. And then when I built that furniture the other day, <laughs> the the table and the thing that I sent you a picture of, I have pulled something in my like, it's like the left side from my bum to my knee, all of that part, like the back of my thigh. And you got sciatica? I have no, I don't think so. But that I think I pulled something because it's not my back. It's just like a uh, maybe like what whatever the muscle is that goes from your bum to your knee, on the back of your thigh that I've pulled that muscle and it hurts so much like just like standing I'm like ah oh, like an old oh lady God. 
so I think I do feel like that was also my body's like you've got to sit down (laughs) you've got to stop slow down take a minute so you're having a chill day today yeah in theory I told Lee yesterday I want to do nothing tomorrow and Mm. this morning he was like let's go for a walk I was like (laughs) I really don't want to do that um we went to where did we go went to Marks and Spencer's Oh. Went to Starbucks and I was just like and then we got back and it was like one o'clock and I thought that's already the day <laughs> that's why I feel like that day. sometimes like sometimes I feel like if I get up late I feel I feel a bit sad sometimes because I'm like oh, mm. well, that's, that's the day wasted it does totally feel I mean I got up at nine which again I, I set my alarm thinking that's a reasonable lie-in but really I think I need one day where I just don't set my alarm and I'm like Let's just see how much sleep I need. And that'll be the day when you wake up really early, just naturally. No. And just naturally, and then all day I'll be like, still so tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was giving you the opportunity, why didn't you take it? Uh, I think anyway. Just, just always tired. I know, it feels like that. Um, mm. But we were going to get into kind of consumerism and how patterns have changed because we were talking about when Emma comes up to visit next weekend, or I think by the time you see this, it will have been last weekend um and we were talking about whether or not we were going to go shopping because we tend to go to the shops and film like shopping content together Mm -hmm. and neither of us were interested and both of us have kind of like dialed back on any kind of videos like that whereas it was every single week we were both like there was some kind of shop with me Mm -hmm. video that was like the bread and butter of what we were doing Mm. and we've lost interest we feel like our audience has lost interest Mm -hmm. and I think there's got to be a reason for that yeah, I mean, I don't know about, you know, everybody else and the viewers, but I just don't enjoy shopping much anymore. Mm. I don't feel that... That's not to say I'm not buying stuff, <laughs> because I am buying stuff, but I have scaled down. Um, I feel like these days a lot of people are shopping small businesses, which is great. Mm-hmm or going on vintage buying second hand i mean I, I mean i love vintage absolutely I love it so much money on vintage we are not it's talking about vintage. we're not talking about like we're not buying things anymore it's just like the 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 way we're doing things seems to be different i i buy the majority of my clothes now on vintage mm. yeah so when well, no, i buy sort of staples like basic stuff i'll mm. buy from wherever i mean like i've been I tend to buy stuff from supermarkets if I need it. Like, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I feel I've lost that, like, need to go shopping. I don't know about you. Like, it just doesn't interest me anymore. Other than, like, I'm more interested in going home shopping now. So I went to B&M the Mm. other day and that was, like, my, that was, like, my crack. Because I was, like, oh, this is, I love it. Love it. I love garden garden centres. Yeah, like, like, the garden stuff stuff. was out. And, like, I was, like, oh, and. And it feels like, I mean, it's unnecessary, but you're just like, right, I'm going to change the whole colour scheme in the garden this year. And I'm like, mm. I don't need it, but you want to do it. So it's like that, it's kind of contradictory, isn't it? Because my need for shopping is like, oh, I don't want to, I don't like going shopping or clothes shopping or whatever shopping. But homeware, I'll gladly spend and change things and all that kind of stuff. I don't How know. much of that, though, do you think is we go, like if when I go shopping in person, if I want something specific and I think I'm going to save money by going shopping in person because I'm going to try it on. And if it doesn't work, I'm not going to buy it. If I buy things online, there's the chance that I won't send something back or I'm buying something secondhand and then it's much more difficult to send something back. It's it, that the idea for me is if I'm going jeans shopping, for example, I want to do that in person. I want to try loads of jeans on. I don't want to have to buy loads from ASOS and send them back. Every time I shop in person, I find nothing. I don't Mm. find something or I go like the other week I went specifically because I wanted a pink t-shirt I put this in a vlog and could not find a pink t-shirt just plain pink t-shirt that fit me in any shop they were just like the the sizes were really lacking the just the stock in general I think I used to go shopping in person we used to go all the time every week we went to Wall. I used to just like walking around the shops and it felt kind of inspiring in terms of you would see something and be like, oh, I really like that. When Mm. you see it in the shop, you go, oh, look at that. 
and I don't know if it's because of the stock just feeling so meh to us now. I don't know if it's because of age or if it's because of Instagram and where we draw our inspiration is not actually in-person shopping anymore. Maybe, yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> I've never been one to, for clothes shopping, for instance. I've never really been one that's really enjoyed clothes shopping, like stemming back from childhood mm. because I was always the bigger girl. So I didn't have the the access to clothing that we do now. Mm. you know so when if ever I did go shopping with my mates I could never try on any of the stuff you know mm. what was I looking at accessories you know because mm. I could never fit into the clothes that all my mates were fitting into and so and this all with... explains the earrings <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes but <laughs> So shopping was a different experience for me growing up. And then maybe, you know, as we got more accessible clothing for plus size women, I was enjoying it more because I was like, I was could try more stuff on. So I was like, yes. But I don't know, maybe now I've got to the point where I'm a bit over it. And mm. it is accessible for me, more so online, let's face it. And so, yeah, I just do a lot of my shopping online I have done rather than in it just doesn't thrill me to go shopping in person I went the other day with mum we went to Castle Point in Bournemouth and it's got like it's like a whole load of shops um all in it's like um what's the word I'm looking for so it's not a high street it's not in town and talking to high street I do feel like high street shops are dying aren't they I feel like Mm. people aren't going to high streets now they're going more to the outskirts so they're going to the the B&Ms the ranges the like all out 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 of town and you so mean Castle like Point... um, a retail park yes that's it and so this is like a retail park but it's got it's got boots it's got river island it's got new look it's got two yeah. massive um supermarkets either end and we went there and we were looking around the clothes and me and mum did a bit of a trying on stuff but we were trying on clothes coming out of the change room going this doesn't look right and just a bit meh mm. and so i didn't have a successful shop Yet, a few days before, I'd bought a few dresses on Vinted. They arrived and they fit perfectly. Yeah. And I was like, that's the, like, I don't know. I wonder if the something has actually changed because I'm not buying stuff that is new. I'm buying things that potentially were being sold in shops two, three years ago, maybe longer than that. I wonder if something has changed either in the cut, the quality, the fabrics, the whatever, Because of the fast fashion, the shops that we were shopping in two, three years ago and finding things that we liked, suddenly the stuff is just not at the same standard that it used to be. Same quality, yeah. No, I agree to a certain extent. However, you're talking to somebody that does shop at Shein Mm. because of the sizing. Yeah. Because of the sizing. I know it's fast fashion. Even that, though, I've got a couple of dresses. I mean, it's only fast fashion if you throw it out. I've got a couple of dresses from Shein. I think this is from Shein, actually. And a, a couple of things. This one I wore to death. It's like oh, a, your bohemian like, dress. Yeah, yes. my, like, like I've worn that and worn that one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're Stephen both from Shein. Dress. Yeah, yeah, love that dress. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If that had come from somewhere like Zara, I would be like, yeah, this makes sense. The quality, the fabric, everything about it. I love that dress. It's kind of hit and miss with places like that. Um, but I think that there are certain places like for example Zara where before you might have gone I know I mean I've never felt this way about Zara but I know some people have I know if I buy this in this size this will fit me and it will be perfect and now the inconsistencies that used to be like yeah this is not great are so much worse like if I Mm -hmm. buy there's one pair of jeans that I really like from Stradivarius and they fit me so well and if I buy that exact pair that wash that size I know they fit me. If I get a different wash of those exact same jeans, they're a completely different size. Mm. It's totally different. And that then makes you think, oh, I could, don't even care. I'd rather go and buy the old ones that I know are right. And so that's what pulls me towards secondhand. I mean, I've, I've got a cardigan down here that I bought one from Zara through Vinted. Loved it so much. I found another colour through Vinted. Would have been, I don't know, 50 quid for this cardigan and I paid £10 each time. Can't argue with that. No, it's but it's um more cost effective, isn't it? Yeah, and, well, it feels uh, better all around. I don't. Also, I don't feel that pressure anymore that that I used to maybe five 
six plus years ago well you know when it first when I first started doing plus size fashion like blogging Mm -hmm. um all that kind of stuff and you'd constantly want to have the dress of the season Mm -hmm. or or whatever you know everybody's wearing the same thing it's a bit you know like you know (laughs) like sheep isn't it but mm. still everybody wants the polka dot dress from zara yes. everybody wants the da, da, da. i don't feel that pressure anymore yeah because so... isn't it weird like now you think why why do i want to have the same thing everybody else is wearing if anything yeah we i want don't to want that yeah yeah it's, i said this in a previous episode about something else but i truly i think it was about plastic surgery truly think all of this stuff is cyclical and we go like everybody wants to be different and then we go into, oh, I want to be the same and I want to, like, be in the yeah. right gang. And then it, that we're overwhelmed with that and everyone then branches off again and is like, I want to be different and I mm. want to be wearing, like, vintage stuff and mm. I'm going to style it differently and look. It it definitely feels more now. I mean, there's still, you've got the same people who are... I, I watch a lot of people who do, like, um, what's it called? What's it? Wardrobes. Uh, capsule. Capsule wardrobes. And they all look the same. They, they're just like robot army of people that all look the same, which is fine because that is, they're buying high quality stuff. They know it looks right. The reason they all look the same is because they're wearing really classic stuff that just looks good. But you've got that area of the internet and then you've got the people who used to be like, oh, this is the trend, I'll buy the polka dot dress. Mm-hmm. and moving more into what is my personal style? How am mm. I going to make this difference? Mm. And I feel like we had that. 10 years ago we kind of lost mm-hmm. it a little bit along the way because social media became I want what they've got and yeah. then again it's people finding their own voice mm. yeah I mean people find their voices at different stages don't they I mean I feel I don't know you do evolve and develop your own personal kind of style don't you but also I feel like that can change all the time like I've said to you haven't I that um I got to a point where I was sick of floral dresses. She says wearing a floral dress. But I, would, I was. I was like, oh, I'm just going to just stick to, like, classic colours. I'm going to go for more, like, blacks and creams and fawny colours and just see if that palette suits me. And I've got, like, basic stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm always drawn to, I'll just throw on a colourful kimono with it. You know, mm. I'm always, I feel like I do miss that bit of colour. Although I do always... And I always will love just a black dress, mm. full stop. Um, but I feel like in the summer I become like bright and I like to wear all the floral stuff. And then in the winter I'll just wear blacks with cardigans. <laughs> That's mm. kind of like my kind of style. I don't know. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, again, this definitely happens with age. As you get older, you try more things, you are bound to find more of like this is what I like and care less about what people think of you in that thing care more Mm -hmm. about how comfortable you are Mm -hmm. but I I think that maybe people now are just a little bit more focused on well I like it and I don't care yeah oh absolutely I was saying this to mum the other day actually um saying about like I just I don't care as much as I did anymore Mm. I was saying it how was I what was I it was about I think it was about going swimming we were talking about going swimming ah that's what it was we're talking about the cruise cruise cruise. the cruise and I said to mum I said oh are you gonna go are you gonna use the pool are you gonna go and use like the jacuzzi and stuff she went yeah probably and she said are you and I went yeah and she went she said that's so funny because 20 odd years ago you wouldn't have been seen dead in a swim costume you'd have been so self-conscious and like now I'm like sure because, I don't care. Because nobody cares. <laughs> nobody nobody cares. cares. It's just you that cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. You're not going to see these people again. Wear the swimming costume. Wear the bikini no. if you want to wear a bikini. I know. You know? And it's I mean, just, I've, I've, I don't remember who it was that said it. It was a celebrity who said, one of the beauties of getting older is you become invisible as a woman and you can just start doing whatever you want. And I think it happens earlier, earlier than we expect. But once you do start to feel less watched, less mm. seen, although that might feel, you know what I mean? You know, like when you walk down the street, someone might have looked and then maybe as you get a bit older, they don't. Right, okay. 
as you see, as you as you feel less generally perceived, people aren't really looking. You know, like if you walk down the street and you're wearing red trousers, everyone's right. gonna look. The equivalent is like as you get older, people just stop seeing you the same way that they would if a really attractive young person walks down the street. Mm-hmm. Even I would look, I'd be like, oh, like just takes that, your interest. When you say that, that might upset some people. Some this older is what people. I'm saying. This is what yeah. I'm saying. So I think that that that's definitely something. Again, we go back to like I am vain. I have enjoyed um, being perceived. I have enjoyed in my youth like someone looking or feeling like I had someone's attention, definitely. I think that a lot of people do. And I definitely had those feelings of like, well, when you get older, um, how are you going to feel? And I actually think it's a positive because you start to care a lot less about what people think because you just think, nobody's thinking about me. I'm doing this for me. Mm. And I think that potentially is when you get people's attention back. When you start dressing for yourself, because it's all about confidence and it's all about the outside in you mm-hmm. know when you see an older woman and she's dressed like so fabulously oh, you're like, all, wow. the time, on the, all the time on the train and i'm mm-hmm. always like oh look yeah. at you and that's a woman who decided she didn't care what people thought of her anymore and it's yeah. around that time that you you stop i don't want to say you become invisible but that is kind of how people put it and i think there's no really other better way of saying it it's then your choice as to who who were you living for to begin with? Who were you dressing yeah. for to begin with? You know, when you see older ladies, um, for instance, I've always said to Chris, I says, do you know what? When I get a bit older, when I'm in my like my 50s, my 60s, whatever, I am going to truly embrace. I'm going to become, you know, like Prue Leaf. And like, she's like big, chunky glasses, chunky jewellery. Absolutely. Different, different colour hair. I'm going to have crazy pink and purple hair. I'm, I'm not going to care. I'm going to be no. one of those. I... I will, yeah. I look forward to that period because I I really think that it it will be freeing. Yeah. To be in at this age that we're at now, it's kind of like a limbo of yeah, not young anymore, but you're not you don't feel like you're (laughs) mature and like an older woman. You remind me of, um, have you seen those reels? I, I need to do it, actually. I want to do a lip sync to it. But, you know, it's like, I'm not young, but I'm not old. <laughs> oh, yes. Like that. Because you're not. We're not young anymore. That's exactly it. It's so weird. When I was at the station, yes, station, station, turned into Sean Connery, not the station. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I sat there and this woman walked past and I recognised her and she recognised me. And, you know, when you just do her like a, like, and then she walked past. And then she she went back on herself and she went, I know you. you. <laughs> no, just, how do I know you? And I, I just went, I went, I used to serve you at the nightclub. And she went, yes. <laughs> I just know At her. least you from, knew. From old. No, but then she remembered. And I, I knew her, I remembered her name. And then when I said my name, she went, oh, of course it is. And it's just like, we both looked at each other and went, we're not young anymore, are we? <laughs> No, because no. you see someone else when you see someone else that is your age and you see them and you're like wait we're <laughs> old we're old it's so funny hey. because when we said it, it I, I said well we're not 20 year olds going to a nightclub anymore are we we're like we're older we're, we're middle-aged now and as i said it she laughed because a group of young people just appeared on the platform like 18 year olds and she went yeah and i went that was us that was us i, was I know and that kind of not almost anymore. brings a tear to your eye of like that was us like the <laughs> that life not that I would ever go back it's one nightmare but mm. it is it's such an awkward age because it, I think it is kind of I mean I know people have talked about the menopause being like this but it's almost like reverse puberty like <laughs> it's like you're finding yourself again puberty is like you're becoming an adult and you're finding yourself but you're finding a self that you feel comfortable being around other people. Then you yeah. go through your like 20s and 30s and that is like, what do you really like? Who do you really like? Who are the friends that you're going to keep? Who are the friends you're going to meet along the way that might suit who you really are? And then you kind of get, I assume, to your 40s and that's a new, who am I really? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> who am I really? I feel like your entire life is like self-discovery. And then but I'll it- never forget when my mum turned 50, she said, and I said this to my friend Joanne because she it was her 50th, birthday get together yesterday and i put in a card when my mum turned 50 
she said, I'm not doing anything I don't want to do anymore. And nice. she hasn't. She has not done anything she didn't want to do. And now she's 64 nearly. And I think that tracks with those years of this is how you do this thing. And then you get to 50 and you go, this. Kim Cattrall said, I think her brother died and she said, I'm not prepared to do anything even for 10 minutes that I'm not enjoying. And I'm for all her. for that. Good for her. It's so conflicting though. You're saying about how, you know, we feel like we find our style and we feel a bit more freer as we get older. Um, it is still conflicting because you've got the perimenopause, which we've discussed in previous, mm. you know, We'll podcasts. come back to that. We'll definitely have a We'll follow-ups. come back to that at some point because there is that like, oh I'm going mad but also <laughs> I feel a bit free it's very like yeah like who am I <laughs> who am I oh, it's on a postcard that's what mm. you'd say um but yeah anyway going back to shopping we've kind of like oh, yeah. mm. deviated off the topic again but yeah I feel like yeah I'm not really into just going clothes shopping anymore and so and my want for going shopping and creating the content of shopping that's why I stopped mm. doing the videos. I just said, I just don't want to do them anymore. I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. No. I don't want to go around and record and like, you know, record stuff. I enjoyed it at the time, don't get me wrong. Um, and people did enjoy watching. Yeah. And probably still would enjoy watching. I don't know. But I feel like um, as a creator, I feel you have to evolve with yourself with the content that you're creating if you're not enjoying it people are going to know yes that's exactly it like i still i just did, wasn't enjoying walking around and showing people what was available in primark anymore they were my most viewed videos they made me mm. money i didn't want to do it anymore and part of the reason was i felt like it was just feeding into that you need new things all the time and me yeah. as like a major shopaholic and i've got a real problem with spending and like shopping as a as a problem thing that I've had to work on in my life I I kind of just had a bit of a moment of I'm doing this to people I'm potentially encouraging people to buy things they don't need to buy and I don't know if that's what I want to be doing mm. Mm. because it's, it's, it's one thing to review something and be like you know these are nice things you might already have these things you know lipstick whatever this is a really nice red lipstick you've probably got a red lipstick let's just you probably don't need this but with shopping and clothes it feels different it feels like especially with how things are now it used to be that we could go shopping like when I was a teenager I'd see something in House of Frasier and I'd be like House of Frasier I'd be like oh I love that I'll buy that when I can afford it six months later it'd still be there mm -mm. now every time you go into Tesco they've moved the shelves around every time you go to Primark <laughs> everything's different so there's that urgency of if you don't buy it now, you may never see it again. Mm, yes. Yeah, and you're so right. That almost then puts the pressure on people to buy things. I don't know if you watched it. It was so stressful. That cleaning, it's called Cleaning Lady with Sheridan Smith on Netflix. Oh, The Cleaner? The Cleaner? Yes. Yeah, oh, The Cleaning Lady. Out. Yeah, it probably is called The Cleaning Lady. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. Did you watch it? Oh, when she was, a, she was a gambler, wasn't she? <gasps> she used to gamble on her oh phone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was watching it with Lee and we watched let's say the six episodes we got to episode five and I said to him I don't know if I can keep watching this it was so stressful watching someone be addicted watching the downfall of someone and you watch to get money and consistently rather than spend that money on things that needed to be dealt with put it on something you know, I'll put this on a, a machine or whatever, because if I've got £500, rather than pay down my £5,000 debt, I'll turn that £500 into £5,000. Watching mm. her do it time and time again, compulsively, knowing that this woman, it's not, it was not something she was choosing to do. It was something that she had to do. Yeah. And watching this happen was so uncomfortable to watch. By the time, honestly, if anyone's not seen it, it's a good story, but... If you if you think that you would be somewhat triggered by watching someone basically ruin their life financially, I wouldn't recommend it because by the end it was not a satisfying ending for me. Yeah, for how stressful it was. It's just come back on. It's just come on to Netflix, hasn't it? But I remember watching it when it was on the TV, mm. like terrestrial TV, a um, couple of years ago. I think mm. it's a bit old, um, but yeah, I vaguely remember it. And um, but yeah, that's. Oh, I think also, I mean, cost of living. Yeah. That's a major factor for a lot of people. Mm. 
Yeah. Anything like where people are pick, pressured. Like, yeah. To spend money that potentially they don't have. And I think that that is happening in on the high street. Yeah. Well, they turn things around so quickly and you have, you've got to have the newest thing. You've got to have the latest whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't feel that urgency or that pressure anymore. Um, but then some people, like you say, might want that, don't have the means to do that, but yeah. will get themselves into unnecessary debt. Because they feel that. like I need to have I do, keeping up with the Joneses thing. Yeah, I need to have the thing, but I don't get it now. Then I won't. It just I don't know. And even to be fair, running a small business, I have a really hard time marketing the business because in the back of my mind, I think, well, of course, you know, you need to market this. We we need people to buy things for the for the business to be successful. But I also have a really hard time promoting myself when my content is free, let alone promoting products that I want people to buy. Because just in the back of my mind, I'm like, ah, oh, but don't buy it. Because what if you can't afford it? It's so difficult. Yeah, I know. But you can't, you have to sort of maybe switch yourself off from that because that's not your worry. No, I know. I totally get that. It's just, I do have that, that barrier between mm. that is like, oh. And I think that that is why I stopped making the shopping content and I'd like you say, people would probably still watch it if we did make it, but there's just the whole thing. We lost interest. Obviously, other people potentially are not wanting to be shopping all the time. I think that there is call for content surrounding use what you have. Yeah. Yeah. But then in the, in the see, you know, you're saying how you find it a little bit icky, like promoting your own stuff and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Equally, sometimes I feel bad creating the content that I do in terms of when I go away mm. because you know I've been on a really lovely holiday I'm going I've got some other holidays coming up and some people can't afford to do that and I feel very lucky and fortunate that I'm able to do that but then in the same breath we are a, a you know a double you're income a, household you're a three, well, income, three household. income household yeah three income household but you know the bills are yeah yeah you yeah know, <laughs> split um all of that's covered and then we have what we have left and we are able to treat ourselves spoil ourselves yeah. you know um we don't yeah, have everybody any lives differently though emma like yeah we, that's don't, like... we don't have any dependence we are what we call dinks double income yeah, no kids no kids <laughs> yeah so the money that i'm spending on holidays if we had kids we wouldn't be we'd be going to butlins because i'd be spending the money on the children mm. you know and, and I, it's, but sometimes I do feel a bit icky because I'm like well here's me going on a holiday but my life yeah. has gone down a different path and so yeah I'm enjoying I'm enjoying my life and doing yes. the things that I want to do because my life's different than what I had mapped out you know yeah but you know what I've had people before comment I mean not for a long time thankfully people seem to be like all the people who really hated me seem to have dropped off or at least they're talking about me somewhere else um I used to get comments about the holidays that we would go on and the only thing it can be is jealousy because why why would you care about why would you care about where someone else goes on holiday but people used to give me shit for taking the kids places like New York Vegas California places like that um i mean we took them to disney world we've, we've been to disneyland paris multiple times but they just they thought we should be taking them like what's wrong with taking them on a beach holiday like basically same as what we were talking about the plastic surgery if you say this is how i want to do it if it's different than how they're doing it they consider it like a slight on their choices me saying i want to take my kids to las vegas i don't care if you take your kids to benedorm i didn't say anything about that I don't care where you take, I don't care if you go to Turkey to the same place every single year. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my kids here. That's not affecting mm -hmm. you at all. But the, I think the main part of all of it comes down to people thinking, well, how have you got the money to do that? And if you actually added it up, like we took the kids to Vegas for two weeks, all four of us went for £2,000. I would, you would struggle to find a seven day holiday in Europe for that. Mm -hmm. It's just about when you go, finding the right deals. We're not like, yeah. you know, made a money yeah. but we find the right 
times to go and the right prices. And it's not, it's kind of comparable to... Mm, you're right, yeah. Especially because one, we've got three adults and a child. Yeah. There's a place that, there's a hotel that we like in Cost. We've been there twice now. Now. and we've said like oh i'd like to go back there because nostalgia like we've been a couple mm. of times it's it's really lovely um and we looked to price it up for say next year it's well over like 1000 i think it's like 1200 pound per person yeah i could go to new york for that this I is what we every time every year we go well yeah. let's just look we'd like to go to italy we'd like to go to greece we go let's just look and then we price it up and we go we could go somewhere in America, which is what we would rather do. Mm. Why Why would we do that when we can do this, that we know we want to visit more states, we know we want to, or we want to go back to Florida, or we want to go back to, why? Mm. And it's, it all comes back to, like, other people feeling that they they want you to be doing what you're doing, what they're doing. Mm. Because if you're not doing what they, they're doing, then they feel like you're judging them. Right. Mm. But then, you know, in the same breath, I'm not, buying loads and loads of clothes so I'm spending my money on holidays rather than shopping yeah. in you know here there and everywhere I'm I'm spending my money on memories absolutely <laughs> but in the same breath you could say I'm not buying any clothes anymore and there would be someone that would be annoyed because they still want to buy clothes <laughs> mm. and they'd be like well you can't tell me I can't buy clothes I didn't say them you didn't say anything <laughs> you saw, I didn't say that you, you do you I'm doing me it's cool yeah. that's not what I said at all uh, to be fair I think I'm on a no buy for the rest of the month now potentially till holiday because I've been mad oh where where is my camera I've got it around here somewhere because oh, yeah. I bought that well, crazy I'll, camera I'll see it in person yes. won't I bought that crazy camera recently that just I looks like a tripod leave. doesn't it just looks like a tripod doesn't what look like you've like... got a camera on top of there can i oh, there we go and it just it like... does look like... it does look like wally Tilt. doesn't it it's so wally. cool if, if that was in white you could definitely be like that's wally wally it is so so cool i would definitely by the time you come up i'll have mastered it and I'll be like, you need this instead of replacing your G7X because it is so cool. I've taken it out today. I was vlogging in places. It doesn't feel any more conspicuous than a regular camera. If anything, you're like, you've got it in your hand. It doesn't seem that big. Like, this yeah. is an extra part that doesn't need to be on. So that's even smaller. Oh, God. Are you enjoying it? Love it. Absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Um, most, most of it, I got thinking that I'm going to get some really cool shots when we go on holiday um just generally in, in the future but then when i go to hong kong on my own it'll be a really cool way to be able to video things without anybody oh, else yeah so i'm gonna do some fun things there um and because i'll be on my own but at least for the travel portion i don't have to i can just like set shots up and do really fun things and not no one's waiting for me no one's bothered yeah so I thought that'll be fun. But yeah, I, mm. I need now to be on a no buy till holiday. There's, a, there's another one that I've seen though. It's a, uh, it's a Canon PowerShot. Is it PowerShot 10? And that's that. I've seen that. Small, small too. It's not mm. as small as that, but it's like, like it seems like it's big. Yeah. Um, I was looking at that. But the thing is, I mean, I've got a spare. I've got my old G7X. Um, so I can use that in the interim. But I, I would, I would like any camera. Well, my my camera's died now the one that i took on holiday mm. won't even turn on i don't even know i think it's just gone like shutting no. down giving up no more <laughs> well so you're gonna have all these cruises this. well this is true and i'm it's gonna a business need expense whole, is what it is I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need the whole tracking around aren't i especially mm. for when i'm like on the boat doing my rows <laughs> yeah you need all of it you need all of it it's gonna be so fun um so yeah that i i am going to be focusing a lot on i'm going to do you know what, what we talked about in the holiday episode um i'm going to do my wardrobes i'm going to do a video on here's what i'm going to be taking with me and i'm gonna mm. try not now to buy anything else for holiday mm. it's like six weeks away so we know you get closer to the holiday and you start panic buying i need this and oh i need a new I toiletry know. bag i need I... more whatever it travel you things you don't no. i overpacked massively no i re i really did i didn't i took so, so many dresses i did i didn't even wear half and a quarter of what i took mm. and they, they just sort of stayed in the wardrobe at the hotel and i was like oh i'm not wearing that now just but, haunting you yeah i know but we didn't really i think i took a lot of sort of going out 
dresses when we didn't really it wasn't that type of holiday maybe i'd wear more of those dresses on a cruise because you you know you oh you need a dress on a cruise you need all go the to dinner and feel all fancy whereas like in vegas you can just wear what you're wearing in the day it's, it's so cash yeah. isn't it you know um yeah so i yeah i'm massively overpacked and i feel like that's actually it's taught me a lesson that i don't need to pack as much well what you'd said about that on the holiday episode um it, and kind of it does fit in with this what you were saying earlier about how especially earlier in this whole like influencer thing where we felt like we were taking outfit shots all the time and you needed a new outfit and new things and also you needed to be able to link those things mm-hmm. like secondhand or old stuff like it was kind of frowned upon people didn't want you to be showing things that they couldn't buy yeah but now if i do an outfit of the day a lot of the stuff is from vintage no one bats an eye mm-hmm. if that was like 10 I years people, ago i don't think people want the in thing now they just want the style they want the look so they can replicate it in their own way yeah you might already have something like this or you'll be able to find something similar secondhand Mm -hmm. if you want to or whatever but that's totally true and i think it's completely as well when i'm thinking in the back of my mind of the things that we're going to do in new york i do have and this has so rarely happened of all the holidays we've been on i always set out thinking I'm going to do this content. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a picture of myself doing this. I'm going to take a picture of myself in this place. And I never do it because I can't bring myself to ask Lee and the kids to take a photo and it be a specific way and be like, I want a picture and I want it to look like this. I'd have to be taking all my own pictures. We're talking like tripod, the whole thing for me to get exactly the shot that I need, which is why the the Hong Kong thing I'm quite looking forward to because I'm going to be really, I can, I, I'm not bothering anyone. But I can't bring myself to do that. And so I never get the shots that I think I'm going to get. And the outfits are then like, well, why did I need five different outfits? Because I just took a picture of myself on this one day. The whole thing is ridiculous. So really, I am trying hard this year, like I said in that other episode, to focus on not my holiday outfit wardrobe thing, but like, what do I want to look like in New York? Why do I only want to look like that in New York? Why am I not? focusing my entire energy into that's my clothes for life that's how I want to look in the world not just this is how I want to look on holiday Mm -hmm. so my New York outfits will be my favorite things that I've worn this year so far rather than new outfits Mm. and that's how it should be I think yeah I, I, I had every intention of doing like an outfit so the week on holiday and then I just completely forgot I've just lost that like yeah i see i think i'm gonna do that i'm gonna try but my outfits of the week it might be two days i wear the same thing yeah and that's just what it is it's like i try my hard if you if people follow on instagram you will know that i've tried my hardest to do like a couple of months i've done like well i'm gonna do 30 days of outfits and i just fail it just it gets to like day five and then i'm like well i'm gonna wear the same dress as i wore on monday so that's not it's not Mm. you know but why you need you should be able to just reweigh your stuff that's why you bought it you know i don't need to wear a new mm. thing every day for 30 days no i just... mean the people that make that kind of content that i enjoy i think that they and this is different because we've got jobs so i think when you when you're a full-time content creator it's a different scenario like we could have a, a days on end where we get out a load of clothes set up a backdrop just film yourself in here's one outfit and then here's another outfit and you just do Mm -hmm. one entire day and just change into 30 different outfits and that's 30 days worth of content when you are actually living a life and working for a living and i mean you know this is a work but you know what i mean you've got a day job then it's a completely different kettle of fish because you're living you're actually dressing to to go to work or to go go to the office or to do something you're not dressing just to take videos yeah it's not it's not realistic yeah it's like it's quite funny because um it's um one of my colleagues at work they joke because um on a monday i wear the same dress they're like oh it's monday <laughs> you're wearing your monday dress i'm like yeah it's monday because it's just it's just yeah. me it feels like a uniform almost like this, i this totally have a uniform to pre-covid i in fact liana mentioned this yesterday when we were at afternoon tea and she said you used to wear um, and she like reeled off these things that I used to wear that were like, I would wear leggings um, and specific t-shirts of specific colours and they had these boots and I would just wear the same thing. I had like a swapped things out, I had two or three different kind of pairs of leggings that were like smart, like a jeggings type mm-hmm. thing. 
And then I'd have certain sweatshirts, certain t-shirts and the same boots that I'd wear. That, that was my work outfit. Mm. No thought in it. Definitely nothing special to be doing an outfit of the day, but they were my outfits of the day. Why, why are we watching inspiration or looking on Pinterest for inspiration for pictures of, of, of outfits we're not going to wear like we'll look up it like I've got some stuff up here and I look and go oh she looks gorgeous in that but there's like 14 accessories that I'm not going to wear <laughs> or there's like several pictures of people with sweatshirts around their shoulders I am never going to do that it oh, looks really? lovely it looks great <laughs> for the picture but I'm not going to do that and maybe we should be really more realistically looking at people in like she's wearing t-shirt and jeans. How is she making that nicer? Is it that the t-shirt is really high quality? Is it like the fabric? What is, how do we improve on the things that we already like to wear rather than trying to cosplay as someone else? I like watching things on Instagram now, not the in dress, the in trousers, the in jacket, the in whatever. I like watching somebody style an outfit. So somebody will just put a dress on and they'll yeah. be like, Ooh. and they go, and this is it styled. And then they'll put a belt, put a jacket, put an accessory, put, and then you're like, oh, I like that. Yes. I like how they've done that. That's more my kind of content now. That I'm and they're showing you how you can wanting. style things you've already got. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you might think that that's a bit blah, but look what I can do with it if we add X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> From an influencer point of view, not for me, because I'm not, I'm, I've am i never really been good at linking stuff anyway and all that kind of stuff, like affiliate links. Um, but it must be a bit of a ball ache for the like real big influencers that need to have the newest thing to link it so people go and buy it so they, yes. you know, get, get a little bit of um, money from it. Amazon um, favourites, people that talk about Amazon things all the time, Amazon storefronts, when they're like, these must have accessories from Amazon all of that this is the i mean we could we could do a whole episode about like the dishonesty in in influencer marketing but all of that i could buy five things from amazon i've bought them technically not a paid ad i've purchased them but i could buy all five of those things specifically to link them and make money mm. i could buy five i actually have ordered a dress from amazon that's like a free people dupe um i was looking i was looking for like an, a second hand version of this dress uh, i could not find it and eventually it, the internet led me to this dupe and i thought i'm going to try that and i thought this is what people do they buy five dresses from amazon try them on do an instagram reel here are five dresses that you can buy from amazon link them in your stories then you can send them back mm. and you can make well, money know. doing that and that's not well, that wouldn't be seen as an ad because you bought them all Actually, you just made me think a lot of people do that with things like, remember the whole ASOS hauls people used to do and then return it. But uh, wasn't yeah. there a thing where they used to blacklist? Not blacklist, is that the wrong word? Yeah, no, but they said you... that they were going to stop allowing returns for high volume customers. Yeah. People that were sending a lot of stuff back. But clearly just to make content. Yeah. To do the links and then sending them back. The funny thing is, I I wanted to try, I want to find some wide leg jeans a few, few weeks ago, months ago, maybe at this point. Um, and I thought that's a good way of doing it. And I had in the back of my mind, I don't want to get blacklisted from <laughs> ASOS because I would mm -hmm. be buying things genuinely on the hunt for a really good pair of wide leg jeans. But I'd want to buy multiple sizes of the same jeans, multiple different styles. I'd be buying a lot of stuff with a view to only keeping maybe one or two pairs. So yes. I went to the actual high street, tried a load of stuff on, did not find one pair. Mm. So I've just wasted my life here. I could have had everything delivered to me tried them on actually because i filmed video clips while i was trying them all on as well by the time i got home i couldn't even be bothered to put all that together it was so many different clips so many different stores I didn't even find anything just wasted like Very a day wonderful. yeah could have had it all delivered from asos done one big try on done an actual video for it sent back the ones that i wanted kept but it, the whole thing i felt like yeah the high street is dying but i also feel like well i can't do that online either hmm it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, because it also then, it, I, I understand that it then causes more work for the employees of the shops that have all the returns to deal with. And there's that kind of weird guilt as well. Mm. That you don't want to buy something knowing you're going to have to return it. Mm. It's, it's awkward. But I do, I do wonder how much of this is just because we have been influencers and we feel a little bit like I was saying in the beginning, we feel kind of burned out on that 
in general yeah well I would be keen to know what everybody's thoughts are in the comments like how do you mm. feel about um do you enjoy shopping anymore do you enjoy shopping watching shopping content do you um yeah what's oh, I've lost my train of thought is it something that excites you because a, a yeah. one, a, another good thing another good example was a few years ago I decided that I was not going to buy anything for content anymore I don't know if that's actually stood firm but definitely in terms of beauty stuff I've not bought any makeup thinking oh I'll make a video about this I've only bought makeup that I want to buy for myself as the consumer that then I'll share my beauty content as a result massively diminished because I was buying things first of all you get haul second of all you get reviews of like first impressions um third you can then split those things off and be like new things from this brand or however many pink lipsticks test it was for my blog for my youtube for everything I was buying things specifically to make content I was spending money I didn't need to be spending I was just overrun with product and not using it because it was too much stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went, I'm not doing this anymore. Now I only buy things that I'm interested in. But that has reduced how much I feel like I can talk about things because it's just so repetitive. But isn't that what we want? We want to hear about people who I've tried a lot of things and these are the things I'm really enjoying to the point where I haven't swapped them out for months. I think that's where why people really enjoy things like favourites and empties videos, though, because they want an honest review of what you are enjoying and mm. what you're not enjoying. Because before, the favourites and the empties would be more varied, but forced to be varied because I was buying things only for content, not yes. buying things because I thought, oh, I'd really like that. I was buying mm. things thinking, oh, people will really like that. Like the polka dot dress from Zara. It wasn't even, oh, I really like the dress so much as I need to have it because the audience will want to see it. Yeah. Remember when there was a time when you used to do favourites every single month? But I i don't even know the last time I did a favourites. I did a favourites not long ago, but it's very few and far between because I'm using the same stuff. I was I'm... doing the favourites every week. Every week? Oh, yeah. Every week. Friday, fa Friday faves and fails. Faves yeah. And, and then faves. it just got to the point of I'm just using the same things. Mm. I'd like to bring that back in in an ideal world what I'd like to move into this year is I am rotating what I've got more and in doing that I'm weeding things out that I don't really enjoy so if every week I force myself to use different things by the end of that week I go I really didn't like this I'm not keeping yeah. this anymore and then maybe in a couple of months I'll keep the basket and talk about the things that I've decluttered but I need to go through the things I've got to know because I don't I've got drawers and drawers and drawers full of makeup and I'm not using it and it's just wasteful mm. it's crazy but I I feel I feel like I've gone through it with makeup a few years ago and now it's happening with clothes as well I'm just not I don't want to buy things that aren't that I don't love I think do you know what I think to round up this podcast I think you said the word wasteful I feel we mm. don't want to be wasteful yeah so much anymore because when we buy things from Vinted, we feel like that's like a free pass because it's already a second life for those clothes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Vinted, Depop, eBay, people go to car boots. Yeah. They go to flea markets, charity shops. Yeah. It's... There's no spending guilt on that because even no. if it was a fast fashion item, you've bought it from someone else who already bought it. Potentially yeah. they've already so... bought it secondhand. So you don't feel as wasteful yeah. or pressured. I think those are the key words, actually, if you think about what we've talked about, the pressure to buy things and not being so wasteful. Mm, yeah. I think that's probably what why we have stopped. Yes. Filming yeah. those kind of videos. And the social media pressure for us being a, a, like a secondary issue of like, you have to create content. Yeah. You have yeah. to make things about the new thing. You have to swatch all the new lipsticks of yeah. this brand. You don't. Yeah, you you don't. really don't. You don't. But then that comes with age as well, because you just, you don't, no. you're not bothered anymore. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. I don't want yeah. to do. No, so well, says that's, James. When get to, that's when you get to 50. Mm, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. I'm not doing anything Anyways. I don't want to do anymore. Um, well, before we before we wrap this up, I should ask you, what are you drinking, Emma? What am I drinking? Oh, well, I've nearly finished. Do you want to guess? Is it Vibina? Like... No. No. Vimto? Yes. <laughs> Vimto last week. You said you wanted something from, uh, you were talking about something and you said, oh, it just needs a cherry aid or something. And I said, no, Vimto. 
needs of intake. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, we went to the shop. Yeah, I was going to get some limeade actually. Maybe I'll, I'll save that for another mm. another episode. What are you drinking, Red Bull? I am drinking. What energy drink? One of my many oh. energy drink. I just need to get through the day, Emma. I just need to get through the day. <laughs> I actually, I bought some CBD um, drinks as well, which I'm going to try this afternoon, but they're in the fridge right now. CBD so, drinks? Yeah, I've tried some in the past, but this one particularly. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well. Anyway, um, I can't remember what we were going to talk about next week, but within the next few weeks, we will be switching to Emma's channel. I've mentioned this in a previous episode but we'll do like uh did you decide whether it was going to be the, the first in the month like first of the month on your channel um i don't mean the first be, of the month but the first yeah, wednesday be. of the month yeah so first first wednesday of every month the episode will be on emma's channel and the idea is we're going to film that one in person mm -hmm. switch it up switch it up so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to filming a couple when we're together this weekend mm um and yeah we'll definitely get into the the burnout and the toxic productivity mm. and something. actually whilst we're, well i mean if anybody has any ideas for topics that you want us to chat about yeah i mean if you're still watching at this point you are our people and Props we want to, to hear you. from you yeah mm. um but otherwise yeah thanks so much for watching thank you and we'll see you guys Bye. next week